Now, a while ago, I made this video about electricity going into the ground, which involved touching an electric fence to demonstrate the effect, which I also did on bare feet to make it extra painful. <laughs> but even if I was wearing my safety Crocs, I could still feel the electric shock, even though it was way less bad. And anyone who's ever touched an electric fence will know it still works if you're wearing shoes. So in this video, we're going to talk about how it's possible that not just with electric fences, but any kind of high voltage power source, you can still get an electric shock, even if you are seemingly electrically isolated from the ground or any other parts of the circuit. So there are a couple of obvious reasons why rubber boots or other types of insulating shoes may not work. So for instance, if the voltage is sufficiently high, it might exceed the breakdown voltage of the material that your shoes are made of. And so it just basically burns its way uh, right through the shoe uh, and into the ground. If it doesn't do that, uh, it might just produce an electric arc that bypasses your shoes completely. So it just kind of jumps from your leg through the air uh, into the ground. And that is the kind of thing that might happen if you're dealing with some you know, high voltage transmission line or maybe you get struck by lightning or a type of situation like that. Uh, but for lower voltages that most people will encounter uh, more often, uh, that is not a, a scenario that you will typically get to deal with, right? So something else that's a bit more common uh, that happens is when for some reason, the boots or the shoes that you're wearing have been compromised, but you haven't quite realized it. So for instance, what is possible is let's say that it's wet outside and you're wearing rubber shoes or rubber boots. And so the outside of those boots is covered in water, which forms effectively a conductive path around the outside of that boot. And so then if, if there is a little bit of water even just on the edge of it, or it just makes its way across and it touches your leg, you've effectively got a, a conductive path through that water, you know, round the outside of the shoe uh, and it bypasses it. So those are some of the more, you know, easy to understand, um, obvious reasons for why, you know, rubber shoes or, or any other insulating type of shoe might not work. Uh, but there is a more interesting effect that happens as well. And that's the main focus of this video. Uh, and that is capacitance. So capacitance, of course, it happens in a capacitor. Uh, like this one here. So uh, a capacitor is essentially just two conductive uh, plates with some kind of insulator sandwiched in between, which is what we call the dielectric. And that dielectric is made of something like plastic or paper, or in some cases it might be some oxide layer. Uh, it's something that doesn't conduct electricity. So what this does is you can store some charge on those plates if you apply a voltage uh, across them, uh, producing an electric field through that dielectric and that can store some energy. So this is a uh, essentially kind of like a very small battery that you can use for various things uh, in an electric circuit. Now what they often tend to do is they take those plates and they roll it up into a cylinder so you get something that looks uh, kind of like this. Now, the interesting thing about a capacitor is that it doesn't really conduct electricity because you know, it's got that dielectric sitting in between those plates. That is an insulator. Uh, there is no way for the electric current to penetrate that. It can't get from one plate to the other. Uh, so a capacitor does not conduct electricity. But my multimeter over here uh, would have you believe otherwise, because if I take these two probes and I set my meter to uh, continuity mode, which allows you to like check if there is a connection. So when I put these probes together, it beeps, right? You've all used that at some point, I think, I hope. Uh, now, if I probe the wires of this capacitor, something very interesting is going to happen. Do you hear that? It beeps momentarily and then it stops. So even though the capacitor doesn't conduct electricity because there is an insulator literally sitting in between those plates, there is an electric current that runs for a very short while. This is the charging current that charges the capacitor. So even though the current can never actually flow through the capacitor because there is literally an insulator sitting in the way, you can still have current flowing into it on one side and out of it on the other while it is being charged or while it's being discharged. And that is precisely why 
Uh, you can get an electric shock even if you're isolated from the ground or isolated from all other objects because capacitance doesn't just happen in you know an intended capacitor like this where it's done by design capacitors are all over the place all around you without you even noticing because any time there is two conductive objects separated by some kind of insulator uh, there is effectively a capacitor there uh, and so if you go back to our example of, of you know a person standing in a field uh, a human is a you know, conductive object, at least he's not a good conductor, but it conducts well enough. The ground they're standing on, the soil usually has a bunch of moisture and minerals in it, so it's also quite conductive. And then the shoes that they are wearing, but also the air that surrounds them, uh, is the dielectric, is the insulator that sits in between those two things. And so there is a capacitance there. And so the moment that you touch a live wire of some kind, uh, that capacitance can get charged or discharged, uh, creating an electric current, uh, which can give you an electric shock. And so this is the effect that actually takes place. Now, of course, the next question becomes, how much capacitance does a human have to its environment or to the ground? And the answer to that is, it depends. It depends heavily uh, on the conditions that you are in. So in a situation where, you know, let's say you're inside a room, inside a building on a non-conductive floor uh, or maybe you're outside but you're outside on like super dry sand or rock that doesn't conduct and you know the nearest conductive soil is is meters below you somewhere in that case you might have a very very low uh, capacitance to the ground but in another situation where you are in a relatively wet field or maybe even worse you know you're on top of a metal structure of some kind uh, you know, even even though you're wearing those rubber boots, of course, or maybe you're standing in a field with your rubber boots on, but there is a huge metal object standing right next to you that is connected to the ground. You're in those kind of situations. You might have a far, far greater uh, capacitance. So this varies a lot and is very difficult to actually know or predict, which is one of the things that is dangerous about it. But for the sake of this video, I do want to pick a value uh, combined with a resistance value for a human so that we can kind of do a little bit of maths to sort of see what's going on to get you to be a little bit more familiar with you know, what is actually happening. So I went online and kind of looked up what typical values are. Uh, there is some uh, standard model being used for like electrostatic discharge applications that models a human as a 1500 ohm uh, resistance with a 100 picofarad capacitance. And I also saw some papers of people like doing tests on, you know, how much uh, capacitance a human has to the ground in a lab. And they got values between 100 and 200 picofarads. Uh, so I've decided that we're going to give our human a resistance of 1500 ohms uh, and 200 picofarads. So, so let's go over to the whiteboard over here. So what we have here is a human, uh, and he's going to touch a wire uh, on which we have uh, a thousand volts DC. Let's start. Let's start with the DC example first. So on this wire we have a thousand volts. I'm just going to write that down here. We have a thousand volt DC, uh, and so again our human is presented by this um, far from perfect, by the way, but relatively simple model consisting of a 1500 ohm resistance and a 200 picofarad capacitance. And of course our human is not conductively coupled to the ground, right? He's wearing his rubber boots, he's not touching any metal objects, uh, he's just capacitively coupled to the ground with his 200 picofarad capacitance. Now, there is an equation that tells you how much current will flow in a situation like this, and it looks like this. And it states that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance times E to the power of minus T over RC. Sounds complicated, but not as much uh, as you perhaps expect, because what this describes, if you plot this out in the form of a, a graph, uh, with current on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, it looks like this. And this makes sense because essentially what you can see here is that initially when the capacitor is connected to the power source, we have maximum current as the, the thing is being charged. And then over time that charging current decays as the capacitor fills up 
uh, the charging speed goes down until it reaches pretty much zero. That is what this equation describes. So now to work out how much current we have at any point in time, we just have to plug those numbers into our equation. Now if we do that for t equals zero, so that's the moment the person touches the wire, um, if you fill in a zero there, you might know this if you're good at maths, this entire part of the equation becomes zero, or becomes one, so it cancels out completely, which leaves us with voltage divided by resistance. That's it. Which in this case is a thousand volts over 1500 ohms, uh, which gives us 666.6667 uh, milliamps. So that is a fairly large amount of current, right? If you've ever looked at those charts of you know, how much current do you need to kill a person, that can kill a bunch of people. That's bad news for a person. However, the time duration of this is incredibly short because this is just the peak current the moment he touches the wire. If we fill in a time value of only one microsecond, which is a millionth of a second, what you'll find is that the current has decayed down to about 23 milliamps. So that's a whole lot less than the original uh, 666 we started with. If you go a bit further in time, you go to 10 microseconds, you'll find that it's dropped below. It's gone below, my, my marker is really quite bad, below one picoamp. So it's basically zero after 10 microseconds. So it's an extremely short pulse uh, that, that is not going to kill our person. Uh, that's basically going to feel like, you know, getting zapped by a little bit of static discharge. It's just nothing. Now, please don't get me wrong. This is not advice to, to go touch a thousand volts. Right? Absolutely not. Stay away from high voltages in, in all, you know, under all circumstances. But given these values, our person would be okay uh, touching this wire. So what about AC then? So in an AC scenario, the story changes because with AC power, you don't have one consistent voltage. You have a voltage that goes up and down in time. So it goes positive, negative, positive, negative. And here in Europe, you know, the standard power line frequency is 50 hertz. So it does this 50 times in one second. That's going to have an interesting effect because that means that instead of just charging the capacitor to some DC voltage uh, once, it's going to continuously charge and then discharge and charge and discharge the capacitor over and over and over again. So we have current going into and out of that capacitor uh, all the time, uh, which is why uh, in a lot of situations AC, or it's one of the reasons why AC is considered to be more dangerous uh, than DC is because in you know, with capacitive coupling the current can keep going uh, instead of dying out after a single pulse like in a DC situation. So what you can do is you can calculate the impedance of a capacitor in an AC circuit with this equation right here. Now I'm kind of hoping that this marker is uh, still going to work uh, but what you'll find is that for a frequency of 50 Hertz our capacitor will have an impedance of 15, well that's so bad, I really hope the camera can see that, but it's 15 million ohms. So that is really quite a large impedance. Now the impedance of our resistor is simply the resistance, which is 1500 ohms. Just like that. I really don't know if you can see that at this point, but I'm just going to continue the video because I've already gone this far. Now then, you can combine those numbers to find the total impedance uh, of the human, uh, which in this case will just be pretty much 15 million ohms. <laughs> because, you know, that 1500, that 1500 is so tiny in comparison to our 15 million, you know, it's not even relevant anymore. So our combined impedance is 15 million ohms, which is going to give us an electric current uh, of about 88 I think, not milliamps, microamps, so 88 microamps. Now, unlike this, that's going to go on 
until the person stops touching the wire. So this doesn't stop, this keeps going, but luckily for our person, that's a super small number, right? That's not going to hurt, let alone kill him. So even in this case, he's still going to be fine, but again, that's just assuming uh, these parameters, which might be different in a real world scenario. So what is the takeaway from this, right? I have to prevent people from getting the wrong idea because if you look at these numbers, you might go, oh, so then I can touch anything if I'm wearing rubber boots. That's not the conclusion you should be getting from this. The takeaway here is that even though you're know, given these parameters, our person might be fine, there is an electric current in both cases. So there is an electric current despite the person being electrically isolated from the ground. And that means that if the voltage was higher or if their capacitance to ground happened to be larger, uh, there could be a sufficient electric current to electrocute them. And so that means even if you are wearing rubber shoes or have somehow insulated yourself or isolated yourself uh, from the ground, you are still not safe. And that is the conclusion of this video. Perhaps I should have just used much bigger values to get that point across, uh, but I wanted to keep it a little bit realistic. So there you go. That is kind of mathematically explained how this works. Now, I think one final thing uh, to mention, which I think is sort of a, you know, an interesting little thing to know, um, this is why you don't see birds sitting on very high voltage transmission lines. So birds sit on lower voltage transmission lines all the time, but not on the very high voltage ones because the bird actually has s significant enough capacitance to the surroundings, to the ground and the transmission towers, that the charging current of the bird, right, the, the current that charges and discharges the bird as they sit on that power line, uh, is enough to be uncomfortable for that bird, so it won't sit on that power line. So that is an example of, you know, a bird sitting tens of meters in the air, super far away from the ground, uh, and yet there is enough capacitance there to be unpleasant for the bird, because the voltage is just so ridiculously high uh, in that situation. So uh, now you know why it is possible that even if you are, let's say, wearing rubber shoes or you've somehow managed to uh, electrically isolate yourself from the ground and other nearby objects, even if it means that you are floating in midair, uh, it is still possible for there to be an electric current. And in some cases, that electric current can be sufficient to harm you uh, or even get you killed. So be careful with that kind of stuff. Uh, it can be there when you don't expect it. Now, does that mean you shouldn't bother uh, wearing rubber shoes? Of course not, right? The situation is still a whole lot better if you do wear rubber shoes. It still helps. It just doesn't make the situation uh, completely safe. And of course, electrical safety is a number one priority on this channel. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe consider clicking the like button or subscribe to this channel. Um, all that's left for me is, of course, to say thank you for watching. <laughs>